नमस्कार दोस्तों जय हिंद मैं हूं गणेश और आप जुड़े हैं नैतिक आलोचक से what india will focus uh, in the international system and are you considering uh, as a success thank you okay now let me bring katelyn in front i want the new batch to come in i haven't heard my new ones so please sorry uh, after the elections uh, what was the second part define success ah okay okay katelyn Hello. Um I'm Caitlin. I'm from Australia. Um and I'm part of <laughs> Since the Since you mentioned an Australian <laughs> I wanted one. Um I'm part of the Ricena Young Fellows program. Um I would like to know um you you mentioned recently that the multiple personalities of a, a Hindu god um equated to the relationship of the quad plus France. You said when they meet suddenly everything starts to work. I would like to hear you speak a little bit more about that unpack it and then talk about what priorities you see for the quad summit this year. That's a very long question but maybe a few few priorities only sir. Uh okay let's go with my friend uh, Mohammed. Uh okay I would like to start by saying thank no, you. No no context question. Th no thank you for organizing Rasina and inviting us. Thank you. Okay so my question is about BRICS. Uh last year there was uh, uh, an expansion of BRICS that included some countries included including yeah, yeah, Egypt sure. my country so what were the standards of choosing the new countries what is the BRICS trying to achieve and should uh, the BRICS have a, a secretary where, where are you from Egypt. Egypt he's a diplomat from Egypt yes okay okay so it's a good question what were the standards and and what were the criteria right yes So uh, what, no, what, no, no, what no, we got the standards what are you trying <laughs> to achieve we've got it we got, got it. it we got the question great question okay next you know i am i am i am tempted to give it to christoph so christoph you've been standing there patiently uh, go ahead with your question but don't make it predictable because i know what you're going to ask now try to surprise me yeah i try i would like to congratulate on the term um cultural rebalancing and uh, observation thank you and um this is the my, my question goes at the maybe surprising way um every great great power every rising power since germany in the 30s to um let's say china in the early 2000 um uh, basically made itself prominent by, in, by the means of sports and the games and olympic games do you think sports would be part of um india's also role and presence in the world Yeah. So, uh, so uh, is that the end? Or can I take one more? Oh, you can take one more. Okay, Rian. Thank you, Samir. I'll keep this. You know, you had that, you had that look on your face that compelled me to give it to you. <laughs> so, my question is regarding the Indian diaspora that you will find uh, in all corners of the world. They've achieved a huge amount of success in multiple fields recently as uh, political leaders. So, I'd like to ask, how do you see the Indian diaspora and people of Indian origin contributing to your vision of Bharat? So the indian diaspora and the bharat of bharat the vision of bharat right yes. have you have you engaged with them on the vision of bharat the indian diaspora no no i i still will finish this and okay okay go, go ahead uh, no should we we can stop here we'll do you'll take one more round, round? one last okay good okay so okay then we are going to uh, do one more round so uh, uh i think the first question was after the elections uh what would you define as success right mm -hmm. so first of all thank you uh, that uh, you are figuring out what the direction of the elections is going to be that's very very perceptive and wise of you uh, and uh, what would i see as success that so look uh the last 10 years i think in many ways we have contributed more we have been more visible we have tried to shape things more we have taken more responsibility and i think every one of those aspects and i can give you examples for each one of them uh, each one you know they would grow uh, but sometimes it's it's good to put things in some kind of number uh, and 
Uh, the fact is that uh, today we are a shade below four trillion dollars. We would be almost double that uh, by the time we finish the next term. Mm -hmm. So, if you look in terms of resource, you know, and what this people use this GDP number as a as a marker. Okay, it it carries a lot of uh, implications. You know, it means your trade will become bigger, it means your investments would be more, it means your influence would be greater, your overall weight goes up in the, in the system. So I would say in many ways that uh, the, the, you know, by the time we reach the end of the decade, uh, uh, def I mean, it's, it's very clear we would be the third largest economy. But more than that, some of the big changes which are taking place in the world and to me as I said re-globalization you know resilient supply chains the idea of a global workplace where there's mobility where new businesses you know the chips the semiconductors the batteries the electric mobility the renewables all of these would require a very different kind of international economy and it's there that, you know, we can bring our human resources really into play. And to me, when I, uh, you know, uh, conceptualize the world ahead, these are to me the new factors of change and that's something I have uh, written about uh, in the book as well. Uh, on, the, on the quad, you know, my, the analogy, uh, analogies are meant to be useful, not always literal. Uh, but the idea was that, you know, uh, I, I find it as someone who's been, uh, you know, with the Quad all through, uh, including the, you know, the, the first attempt. Uh, I find Quad actually very comfortable to work with, I mean, my Quad colleagues. Uh, there's a lot that we share in our way of work. I mean, bear in mind, culturally, we are very different but we are all deeply democratic societies, market economies, pluralistic in many ways, able to argue out uh, positions, put, you know, things in a, in a very uh, direct fashion to each other. So there is a certain comfort which has actually enabled Quad to ramp up very, very significantly in a very short space of time. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, when, you know, when I look ahead, I do see it as one of the principal mechanisms uh, uh, of consultation and policy making in respect to the Indo-Pacific. Uh, on BRICS and, uh, you know, the standards criteria, yes, there were standards and criteria. These were discussed in great detail. Uh, for various reasons, it was not made public. Uh, but obviously the standards were good, which is why we have Egypt. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, the, there were certain specific issues which were considered while taking the decision. But there was a broad alignment, you know, do these countries align with the, uh, with the nature of BRICS, with the uh, positioning of BRICS, the, the sort of uh, thinking of BRICS. And I, I think uh, that was the overall uh, overarching criteria, you know, thinking which really guided the selection of members, along with some kind of geographical regional uh, balance. Uh, on cultural rebalancing, uh, I do think that is a big uh, uh, debate of our times, you know, which is in a, glo in a globalized world, this attempt to define who is politically correct, who is not, who will give judgment on whom, who will rate whom, who will, you know, make those decisions. Uh, to me, that's an extrapolation of the competition, you know, that the clever guys get in, you know, the smartest way of playing a game is to become the judge. Then you get to decide how the players have done. Now, uh, I think there's going to be a tussle how this works. Uh, and uh, my sense is, if the economic diversity and the political diversity of the world have asserted themselves, I can't imagine that the cultural diversity will not do mm -hmm. that. So I see that as something is coming. 
sports. You know, um, look, countries like sports for two reasons. They are a reflection of competitiveness. Uh, they also are a matter of pride. I think both are reasonable. I mean, and it doesn't have to be the two countries you mentioned. I, I mean, I cannot, uh, I mean, every country today at any game, I mean, it could be soccer. I mean, if a country wins uh, a soccer final, I mean, Argentina uh, saw it as a matter of enormous pride. So it's to me taking pride and preparing yourself for sports and honing those skills is a very natural part of human competitiveness. In this country, we also see that as very important to national fitness. So a lot of what we do, you know, we have two or three big movements in this country. You know, we have something called like Play India. I mean, that's a literal uh, translation of... of Hello sort, India. Hello India, or, you know, a kind of a fitness. So we want people to be fit. I mean, it's, it's part, frankly, of a public health policy. It keeps a country uh, psychologically, you know, sharp, uh, if, if you encourage that. And uh, certainly, I, I, you know, a lot of us in public life, we try today through personal example to exhort people to, you know, uh, to take part in sports, to stay fit, to do things. So I am very much a votary uh, of uh, that kind of thinking. Last question, Indian diaspora and Bharat. You know, I, I have, yes, uh, there have been occasions I've had conversations, but I, I've felt from interactions I've had that the book resonates, the argument, the concept resonates very much with the diaspora, as it does, in fact, with large sections of Indian society. Mm. Okay, I'm going to, uh, unfortunately, I'm now going to use my veto as the moderator and limit this to uh, four <coughs> uh, names. Last four names, short questions, no context, uh, and I've already accepted all your thank yous, so no thank yous. Um, okay, so so last four names, let me just pick them up. Sonam, you have been standing there, so I'll come to Sonam. I want to uh, come to the brave Charlotte. She's not well, but she's still standing in the line, so I want to come to you and Carla. So you, Carla, uh, and, uh, uh, and Sonam are, are, are the first three, and maybe just because of persistence, I'll give it to Robert. So. So, so, so uh, let's go, Sonam. Let's start with you. Uh, good evening, Your Excellency. I'm Sonam from Bhutan, alumni of the Summer School of Global Governance 2017. While uh, India is navigating the turbulent world we live in with admirable clarity of purpose, how does she plan to accommodate the concerns of Bhutan, which is caught between the two giants, of uh, both of which are ancient civilizational states? Given uh, Bhutan's dependency on India for most of its needs and surplus in favor of India, how can India assure Bhutan that the concerns of countries like Bhutan and other smaller states matter? And how can competition be healthy between two powerful neighbors instead of the kind we have seen in Maldives? Thank you. Charlotte. Hello. Uh, you can bring the mic down. It's okay. I'll just go on my toes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so there's currently an Indian delegation in London looking to finalize the FTA with the UK. We've talked a lot about the EU and the relationship with India, but with the signing of the FTA, what, what will relations look like now, modern relations between the UK and India, which go back so many years? Thank you. What would the relationships look like if you signed the FTA with UK? Uh, uh, that's a question. We'll, we'll, we'll come to Carla and then Robert. Uh, Robert, maybe you can come in, come in, come in, come in. Let's go. Hi, thank you. You've spoken about India as a civilizational power. What's your message to allies and partners who worry about the more extremist aspects of Hindutva pride? And is there a point at which these domestic issues would start to impact India's international standing? Should you do more to reassure uh, allies and partners in the world about that? And finally, Carla. Uh, uh, Robert, um, uh, you can also, uh, so, uh, where are you from? US. US. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I would like to ask, um, there's been a lot of talk uh, in the last few days about what a potential second... Uh, can you come closer to the mic? Yes. We can't hear you. There's been a lot of talk about what another Trump presidency would mean for Europe. 
Um, I would like to ask you, what do you think it would mean? अगर आपको हमारा ये वीडियो अच्छा लगा हो तो इसे लाइक करें, शेयर करें, सब्सक्राइब करें वंदे मातरम जय हिंद